Hello everybody, welcome back to Sophisticated Cakes by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I made this wedding cake for a friend of mine. I love how the white and the black contrast against each other with a little hints of a deep green and a gold. Now let's get right to it. Now I did make the marshmallow fondant that I like to use the most, but the black color that I used had a lot of the store-bought black with some of the um, homemade added to it to help give it some more elasticity. It helped, but I did struggle with it a little bit. But this is how I'm marbling these little pieces. I'm taking little pieces of the white, and, or chunks of the white, and I'm adding, marbling in some of the black and some of the green, and I'm just rolling it out fairly thin. And I'm doing this to a couple different sections, and I'm just setting them to the side because these are going to be my marbled accents. And in each little piece, I'm adding more of one color and less of another. I'm kind of making a different, a variety of different patterns and different intensities of colors. I wasn't sure what I was gonna use, so I just made sure that I had enough to pick from. Then I did marble a little bit of white in with the black to go on to the top tier. I wanted to have mostly black on that top tier as the marbled sections, but with a little bit of the um, the white, just to break it up a little bit. And I have a, that big piece of, of black fondant that I just have pressed down, and I'm taking sections from those uh, pre-mixed together marbled sections. I set them aside and let them firm up a little bit so that when I tear them into smaller pieces, you get kind of um, a more faded out edge, not so, it's more ragged, I guess is the word I'm looking for. I think it gives it more of an organic look. I didn't mind if when I roll it out, it cracks a little too. That's fine too. But the idea here is to have your basic black background with pieces of the, um, the marbled pieces. Mainly black though. You just kind of press them in there, use a little, little shortening if you need to to get them to stick and roll it out. And I didn't feel like there was enough of the deep green. The deep green turned more of a paler green as I was rolling it out. So I did take little sausages of the, um, the deeper green and just kind of place them on towards the end so that they didn't fade out. She wanted that deep green to come out. Now roll this out to about, oh, about a quarter of an inch thickness. And just make sure that when you roll it out, it's wide enough to drape over the cake. And place it on the top first, rub that down on the top, get rid of those air bubbles, and then kind of uh, rub it in on the sides around the edges, the top edges there, because if there's gonna be any ripping and tearing, typically it's gonna be up on that upper edge because that's where the weight of the fondant hanging down on the bottom can kind of pull it apart. You don't notice that so much with um, all marshmallow fondant, that's why I love it. But since I have it mixed with a cheaper store-bought kind, because that's what I was supplied with to use, um, it did want to kind of rip and tear a little bit. And I did have some sections where I had to kind of piece it together, but I think in the end it worked out just fine because of the look. This design was fine with that. You can kind of see it a little bit on the edges there, but that was, that was the best I could get it to do. That was my second go around. And yeah, it wasn't even gonna get better by me overworking it, so I just went with it. Then I'm just smoothing it out after I cut off the extra pieces around the, ed the bottom, smoothing it out with my fondant smoothers, adding a little bit of cornstarch when I need to because of the condensation. I do chill my cakes before I put the fondant on so that the buttercream stays crisp so you get those crisp corners that you see I'm trying to reinforce there by doing the clapping of the fondant smoothers together. Um, yeah, so if you chill it, before you put the fondant on, you're gonna have a little bit of condensation, which actually helps the fondant stick to the buttercream, but at the same time, it can kind of come through the fondant a little bit and you just need to use a little bit of your cornstarch to soak up some of that wetness so that you can smooth it with your, with your smoothers. And then removing some more of that off of the bottom. Now you can see there's some whiter patches. The black doesn't look real shiny black right now, and that's because of the cornstarch. I will go in later and remove that. Don't be worried about the, that at this stage. Once you get that where you want it, go ahead and set it in your refrigerator until you're ready with your top tier to assemble it. And for the top tier, we're using white as the background color. And I just took, kept some of the pieces that I had ripped off from the bottom, cut off and ripped off on the bottom. 
of the bottom tier and I'm using those as my pieces that are of the marbling that are gonna go on the top tier. I like to reuse what I have and you can see I had quite a bit of extra. That's okay. We can mix that together later and have a gray. We might need a gray at some point. I'm sure we will. And the same thing here. Just roll it out so that it is the right size to drape over your cake. To find that size you can measure the top across the top of your cake and then measure the height of your cake. Take the height times two then add that to your distance across the top of your cake and that will tell you how wide you need your piece of fondant to be all the way around to be able to reach cover your entire cake. That is the formula. And same thing, pick it up and drape it over your cake, remove any air bubbles from the top and then just gently massage it down on the sides. You can see I didn't wrestle with this nearly as much because this one was mostly the marshmallow fondant. There are, are some applications where the store-bought kind works just fine, but for draping over a cake, I do prefer, obviously, because since I keep saying it, the marshmallow fondant. And I'm popping any air bubbles that came out. You will inevitably have air bubbles and just use a sharp pin and pun just puncture that, hole, that air bubble and just smooth it out. Then I just moved it onto my board or onto the turntable and I'm just removing the excess from the bottom and getting it as smooth as I can. And then doing the sharp edges again. Always doing those sharp edges. When I first started doing cakes, the rounded edge was fine. But I tell you what, once I saw that this sharp corner thing was coming in, that became my mission, figure out how to do that. And I will never go back. <laughs> and now we're putting the cake on to the finishing board. And I'm using my star cutter to show me where I'm going to put my, my supports. Now these are all cut to the same size and I'm just putting them in at the points of each of the, um, of the star. At each point of the star. Use a little buttercream, you can use ganache, you can use whatever you have to get the top tier to stick to the bottom tier. Now this tier had been in the refrigerator also, so I can kind of touch it a little bit as I'm placing it on top here. You know, I wish we had a top tier. I like the three, this is pretty, but I like the, the taller three tier cakes myself. It's kind of just my visual preference. Everybody has their own. And when you are doing orders for clients, you have to go with what their preference is. And I think it turned out gorgeous. And I am just going in with my gold paint that is just gold luster dust mixed with Everclear. Using a finer brush, it's kind of a medium tip brush because I wanted to have it be more abstract and not just a clean smooth line of gold. I wanted it to be irregular. And I'm just picking just different parts to accent. I find to tie the whole thing together, sometimes it's, it's best if, see how you can see I did up on that bottom part of that arch and then I continued it down on the next patch of marble. It just kind of makes it cohesive. Keep in mind, the entire design when you're figuring out where to do your metallic touches. And you can also go in where you might have some little cracks in your fondant like I had on this bottom tier and um, use that as a place to add your gold touch. You're camouflaging that and no one will know. And on this spot, I'm trying to tie the two different tiers into each other because you have a stark contrast between that white and the black on the two different tiers. And if you make it look like those veins go cohesively from one to the other, it brings it all together. In hindsight, I kind of wish I had gone in just because it's just my aesthetic and placed just like a silk flower, like a singular silk flower a white one maybe in between the top and the bottom tier. I think for me, visually, that would have tied it together even more. But ultimately, it's what your client wants.
In this section, I felt like it was just too much dark. That piece ended up rolling out bigger than I would have wanted and it um, ended up staying on the cake. A lot of times these things stretch out and you end up cutting them off any extra pieces when you are cutting the excess off. But this piece stayed on there. So what I did was I went in and I used the gold to kind of add some veining into it just to break it up a little bit. And this is where I am getting rid of that cornstarch. I'm just using my brush with a little bit of shortening and just brushing it off. I didn't bother with the white because you don't see it as much there and I didn't have as much cracking. And it's gonna have a little condensation when you bring it from the refrigerator to room temperature anyways. And that tends to eliminate a lot of that cornstarch, just the natural condensation, but you do see it more on the dark pieces, the, the black and the darker grays. So this kind of takes care of all of that. You could steam it with um, a clothes steamer, but with the gold, I don't want that to drip. So that's why I'm not using this steamer to steam out the cornstarch or off the cornstarch. And here's our finished product. I will always like black and white together. I think it's so sophisticated and eye-catching. So I hope you liked it and I hope you decide to give it a try. If you do, tag me on Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary, because I always love to see what you guys come up with. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.